Okay, so I was on Reddit recently when I came across this video of a woman jumping out of her car to escape her abusive husband. And some people in the comment section were basically asking, like, what had happened to this guy? What was going to happen to the husband in this scenario? Now, the thing is, is people, uh, mostly women, jumping out of cars is actually an interesting question from a criminal law perspective. And it can throw up some issues around causation, like whose fault it is that that happens. Later on in this video, I've got some more real stories and some dash cam footage. But for now, let's just watch the Reddit video. Hey, I'm a, I need police ASAP. I'm on I'm on 410 South by Ingram Park Mall. A lady is screaming outside her her Ford, a gray Ford exiting Ingram Road right now. She's trying to get out of a vehicle and the guy won't let no, she's not exiting. They got back on 410. Um I don't know, it says 410 South from Ingram going towards uh like Marbach area. I'm following them right now. She's trying to get out of the vehicle. It's a ditch off the military drive exit by the academy now. Okay. Military drive. We're in the frontage road. We're. What is this guy doing? She's screaming and kicking in the car. He's erratically. She's trying to get out of the car. She's opening the door. She's trying to jump out. She. He sped up and he couldn't get out. Okay, now we're on. We're taking like the turn up. We're on four. She jumped out. 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 Yeah. Ma'am, get in my truck. Get in my truck. Okay, he's been hitting me. Okay, I'm going to the police station right now. Okay, so a woman in the car is clearly distressed, tries to jump out several times and eventually succeeds. She said her husband was hitting her, so putting aside any potential domestic abuse related charges or kidnapping charges, what about the damage that was actually caused from jumping out of the car? Is that also the fault of the driver slash the husband here? You're probably saying, yeah, fucking obviously, but people in this situation sometimes try and run the following argument in court. They say that because the victim chose to jump out of the car themselves, that that actually puts the responsibility for what happened on them them and that as a driver it's not really your fault if somebody again mostly women choose to do that this is sometimes called breaking the chain of causation and it's basically where the victim does something that kind of like muddies the waters around who did what and who's responsible for what take for example the case of the crown and roberts here in the uk 21 year old woman goes to a party meets a guy he offers to drive them to an after party afterwards but instead finds a quiet road and tries to grope her tries to take her clothes off and when she fights back he puts his foot down on the pedal and speeds off. She jumps out of the car, but then he says well, it's not his fault that she jumped out of the car because she made the decision to do that herself and any injuries that she got is just totally on her because she made that choice. To settle this issue, the Court of Appeal has said across a few cases that you need to focus on, one, whether the actions of the victim could have reasonably been foreseen and later, whether the victim's actions fell within the range of responses which might have been expected. So going back to the Reddit post, this took place in San Antonio, Texas, and while I'm not an expert in Texas law, the issue of causation, I did the person being blamed for something cause the thing that they're being blamed for, is something that actually has to be tackled by every criminal justice system around the world. So since I'm no expert in Texas law, if we stick to whether or not something was reasonably foreseeable, do you think a wife jumping out of a car to escape her abusive husband is a reasonably foreseeable response from someone in that situation? It's a question for the jury, but I would say that there's a chance that that's a yes. Okay, so what about this one? Gwinnett police say you are looking at a carjacking and kidnapping as it happened. The violent assault against a 23-year-old Lawrenceville mom and her one-year-old baby took a dramatic turn once the suspect drove off with the car door still open. The mom knew she had to do something to protect her and her child. The suspect told the victim that he wanted money from her and he also said that he was going to choke her to death and kill her. Uh, the victim at that point in time decided that the best course of action would be to jump from the car. Damaged car seat is evidence of the mother's uncanny bravery. The car was going 50 miles an hour. A woman jumping out of a car with a baby after being abducted by a stranger in a parking lot. 
I'm going to say that this feels like a comfortable yes to me at least. Next, we've got a story about a woman who reportedly jumped out of her boyfriend's car that was traveling 60 miles an hour after an argument and she couldn't wait for him to stop. Nobody was charged or even arrested here apparently. And I'm just going to say that this would come as a real shock to me if my girlfriend, which I don't have, decided to eat road as a response to an argument that we were having. But I guess what the argument about is relevant because like if this is her response to a disagreement over which IKEA coffee table looks best in the in the dining room, then okay, I'm going to call that massively unexpected. But if her boyfriend had just confessed his desire to sacrifice her to the moon people, King Kong style, then yeah, maybe Maybe the hard shoulder was her best bet here. Who knows? We'll never know because I couldn't find any more information about this one online, sadly. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Yes, these have been a little on the easy side. So now we're going to go over a few real stories from around the world. And when you're thinking about them, just try and imagine that they happen wherever you happen to live, right? Because they, they could realistically happen anywhere. Okay, first, a woman in India jumped out of a taxi after being asked for her number. Definitely creepy and inappropriate on the driver's side, but does it warrant a jump into traffic? I'm not so sure. What do you think? Second, a woman in Malaysia gets into a taxi and because of a language barrier, she thinks the driver's ignoring her and the driver thinks she's a drug mule. So she jumps out of the car. There's a lot going on here and I'm just going to see if anyone unpacks it in the comment section. What do you think? Finally, and one that I think is quite interesting, a woman jumped out of a taxi for going the wrong way. Now, think about this. There's no shortage of stories about, there about women having scary experiences in taxis. And here in the UK, we've definitely had our fair share of that as well. I mean, anyone else from the UK might recognize the name John Warboys. He was like a prolific serial rapist who worked as a taxi driver in London. He was a black cab taxi driver and he raped anywhere between 19 or 100 women over however many years, right? So this is a very real and alive issue for women. So if it's late and you're a woman alone in a taxi or an Uber and the driver goes the wrong way and like maybe starts heading somewhere quiet, somewhere a little out of the way, you know, is it expected that you might be afraid in that situation? I think the answer to that's actually yes. Especially if, as this young woman in Dublin did, you pointed out that the driver was actually going the wrong way and you weren't taken seriously or you were ignored. But what if you're a new driver or you've had a long shift and you're really tired or the woman you're driving is really drunk and you don't really take her sense of direction particularly seriously or you make a mistake for any number of other reasons and then out of nowhere, your back door swings open and the woman you were driving is suddenly tumbling across the road. Well, from a criminal law perspective, you actually could be in a bit of a pickle maybe. But do you think that taxi drivers in those situations should be punished? Or do you think it's fair to say that they caused that to happen? Let me know in the comments. And if you are a practicing lawyer or a law student or just someone with an interest in law, give me your hot take in the comment section below, particularly if you are from a country other than the UK, because I'm always interested to hear about like the differences in laws around the world. And also, if you think maybe some of these stories are a bit of a red herring because of other areas of the law. You know, I've obviously focused on this from a causation perspective, but I do think there's a discussion to be had about you know, mens rea and then also potential defenses like mistake as well. So if you've got any comments like, that, be sure to let me know in the comment section below and I'll have a read of them. If you haven't thought of yourself as someone who likes criminal law, but you've quite enjoyed the exercise that we've done in this video of kind of like going through different cases, different scenarios and seeing how they differ and how you would react differently, then you might actually be a criminal lawyer in waiting. So be sure to subscribe to catch future uploads. Thanks and I'll catch you in the next video.